Hello everybody, I hope you are all doing well. I'm Mikhail from Pet School and I just wanted to thank all of you who were in who are in my Puppy Raising with Pet School Facebook group, those of you who submitted your questions today. It's so great to know where you guys are at with your puppy raising. A lot of the things that you are experiencing are really, really common and you're helping each other out as well with really great suggestions. So thank you. All right, so what I'm going to do today is with the questions that I received, I, I've kind of grouped them together. And some of this information that I share will be new to you, especially if you're new to the group, and some of it you may have heard before. But I find, for me personally, I need to hear the same message a few times before I'm able to apply it. So hopefully, if, if some of this is familiar to you, hopefully you're able to still walk away with some really valuable information today to help you with your puppy raising. All right, so the first couple of questions I got were from Eloise and Lauren, and they wanted to know how to work on recall, so calling your puppy back to you, and also how to work on lead training. So I'll start with lead training at the moment. Um, I'm not sure whether you meant how to teach your dog to walk nicely on lead or whether you just want to get your puppies comfortable with the concept of being on lead. So that's where I'm going to start today, just getting them used to the concept. Because having a collar around their neck and having it attached to a lead can be really a really weird concept for a dog really. I mean it's not something they were born with, it's not something they'll probably be familiar with. So I'm going to start there for you today, we're just going to get them comfortable with that concept. So first step is we're going to bring the lead and the collar out and we're just going to leave them on the ground. Puppies are naturally going to go and have a sniff and kind of check them out. We're going to reward them for that with a treat and that's all they need to do. And then the next step is you're going to get the collar around the neck, but don't do it up. Just remove it again and give them a treat. And then the next step would be to put the collar on, do it up, then remove it and give it a treat, give your puppy a treat. And then you put it on, leave it on for longer and give them a treat while they've got it on. So with all the training that I do, you start out really, really basic and then you add duration and you add some complexity but you need to work at your puppy's level with everything that you're doing. So some puppies, you can put the collar on, do it up, go for a walk, and they never even question it. Some puppies really freak out even being touched by a collar. So work with your puppy where they're at. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the lead. So now you've got the collar on, and remember that each of these steps could take hours or days or a lot of practice sessions, so don't move too fast. Um, then you're gonna do the same thing with the lead. So they're gonna sniff the lead, they're gonna get a treat. And then you can do the lead up and then immediately remove it and give them a treat. Then you're gonna do the lead up, leave it on for a while and continue to give them treats. Now, if you have a really small puppy and a really long lead, make the lead smaller, tie it up. But I want them to get used to that feeling of having a little bit of drag behind them <laughs> um, that will really help for just loose loose leash walking in general and getting them comfortable with having a lead on and then you can start playing with them you can play fetch or tug or whatever you would normally play with your puppies but do it with the lead on so it just becomes a non-issue for them and they also get used to the fact that when i've got this lead on life is still really fun I get heaps of attention, I get treats, this is a good thing. So I'm not even going to talk about how to train a dog to walk nicely on leash because I'm not entirely sure that was the question you were asking. So I hope Lauren and Eloise that helps you out with teaching your puppies to get used to being on lead and wearing a collar. Now the other question um, was around calling your puppy back to you. So this is a command that I think everybody needs to work on with their dogs throughout their dog's life. This is the one command that I would never suggest you can set and forget because if you don't practice this a lot, your dog will naturally find something more interesting to do when they're at 
when they're outside at a dog park. There might be a rabbit to chase or a kangaroo or if you're in Australia or a wombat and that means they are going to stop listening to you because they have caught wind of something glorious and that glorious thing might be running which triggers their hunting instincts so you have lost the battle at that point. So with recall I will when I've finished here I'm going to link to uh, the blog post I wrote which has step-by-step -step instructions and I'll just go through them really quickly here. So when you're at home, when there's no distractions, I want you to start calling your puppy to you. And how you do this is you figure out what phrase you want to use. So it could be come, come here, over here, to me, whatever you use, make sure you always say the same thing. And you're going to put your puppy's name at the beginning. So whether you let's say your puppy's name is Candy, you'll say, Candy, come. So you've already got her attention when, when, you, when she hears her name and then you're giving her her instructions and when she comes to you give her a treat and grab her collar gently and I just I like to throw in a collar grab here because throughout your puppy's life or throughout your dog's life they will have to have their collars grabbed and sometimes it can be really stressful for them it might be a really stressful situation when they have to be grabbed and so I just like to get them used to the idea of having their collars grabbed having it combined with a treat and and it's all good like there's there's no drama there's no stress so that's the first step and then you can start practicing this between different family members and between different rooms in the house and then between inside the house and outside the house so we're just going to get them used to the idea of hearing their name hearing that command and knowing what that means and there's no other distractions then you take it out into the real world, but you've got them attached to a leash. You could do a, you could use a retractable leash or a piece of rope or buy a, a long line, but it's just a protective measure so that they can't just take off and, and forget to listen to you. So you're going to practice the same thing, but this time you've got a leash on, this time you've got distractions. So you let them get a meter away and then you call them back and treat them for that let them get two meters away three meters away and once you feel like you have that under control and they're able to listen to you when there are real life distractions then you take the leash off and then you practice again from that one meter mark they get a meter away they come back they get a reward two meters etc etc and you keep building up that way now when you feel like you have that under control then you do it randomly throughout your walks so for no reason in particular you call them back to you they come back and they get a reward and then you really do just need to keep working on it throughout their lives they need to know that you are more important than anything else at the dog park there are certain breeds that are better at this than others um, a beagle for example will always follow a scent no matter what you do pretty much every beagle owner i know walks their dog on a leash because they have spent hours at the dog park trying to get their dog to come back to them sometimes you're working against the genetics of the dog so practice it never let up and keep going would be my advice with that one all right now margie's bedlington terrier jumps all over her when she's having a cup of tea and she just wants to be able to relax. So Margie, what I would be doing here, first of all, when you just want to have a rest and have a cup of tea, put your puppy in their safe zone so they just can't get to you. All right, you just want to relax. You just want to chill out. So that would be my first thing. Now, when you're ready to do a training session, then you start working on sit and on your mat. Those commands will give your terrier, I didn't get the name of your terrier, but they'll give your terrier something to do, something to focus on, somewhere to go that doesn't involve jumping up all over you and your cup of tea. So again, when I finished here, I will link to my blog with the step-by-step -step instructions for those commands. But that is how I would approach it. I'd get the puppy out of the way when you're trying to relax. I would train her when, or him, actually, I'm not sure if she, if it's a girl or a boy 
Um, I would train the puppy when you have some time. And then once you've got those commands under control, then you can set up a real life situation with a real cup of tea and start reminding puppy of where they're supposed to be during those times. All right, Jackie, Noga, Sue Allen, Lily and Natalie all want some more guidance on alone time training. So some of your puppies are really struggling with this and some puppies just get it. Some puppies have no problem and they're all different. And it, there's so many factors that go into confidence and alone time training. So if your puppy was raised in the backyard or in the garage and is not used to being at home or like in a home environment, that could have a big impact. Some of your puppies are leaving their mums much earlier than I would like. Not your fault at all. And it's not the breeder's fault sometimes either. Sometimes the COVID is just throwing a spanner in the works with that. Sometimes we just have to work with what we've got. But I do think some of them are coming out, you know, some of them are coming to you about six or seven weeks old. And I just feel like that's way too young. So, and you also want to bear in mind their genetics. Some dogs have just been bred from dogs generation to generation who are a little bit more nervous. That's all going to work against you. So if you have a puppy that can be put into a playpen or a crate and can be left and they're totally fine, celebrate that. That is wonderful, wonderful news. Well done. If you don't have a puppy, just keep in mind that this is a really terrifying experience for them. And if you don't gently teach them how to get used to being alone, you'll end up with an adult dog with full-blown separation anxiety, which is where they bark or howl or destroy things in a panicked state. And that's a really horrible place for your, for your dog to be. So what we're going to do is it, it doesn't matter whether you're going to be putting your puppy outside. Some of you want your puppy to be alone outside. Some of you want them in a playpen. Some of you want them in a crate. It doesn't really matter where they're going to go. We're going to follow the same process. So the first thing is we want to get your puppies comfortable with that area. So I'm just going to use a playpen as an example just to make it simple, but you can apply this to whichever area you're putting your puppy into. Get the puppy to go in, throw a treat in there, Get the puppy to go in on their own and leave the door open and then let them come out again. And that's the first step. You're just getting them to pair the idea of, okay, I'm in this area. I'm getting a reward. This is totally fine. And you're just going to work at that level. And then the next level, you're going to start closing the door. So you're going to get them to go in. You're going to close the door. You're going to immediately open the door and then give them a treat. And with all the training, I think I mentioned this before, we just, we do one step at a time, we do baby, baby steps, and we gradually build up confidence in whichever area it is. And then that way, you're never pushing your dog too far or too fast. Now, if you can shut the gate or shut the door for five seconds without the puppy panicking, start there. If your puppy panics as soon as they get into the crate, you need to leave the crate open or the, the playpen open for a little while longer until they're more confident. So then we're going to add, one, once they're comfortable with the door closed, we're going to keep them in there for a little bit longer. And again, you might need to work up one second at a time, or you might be able to work one minute at a time, just figure out where your dog's at. Then we're going to add more duration. So we're going to throw a treat into that area. We're going to let the puppy go in there. When they get in there, they're going to find a deliciously filled Kong or puzzle toy that's going to keep them entertained. And then you're going to shut the door and then just hang out. So you're ignoring them. You're doing your own thing. You could read a book or watch TV, but you're still there. Now, if your puppy's able to cope with that, get up and leave the room for five seconds and just see what happens. Come back in. If the puppy's still fine, you can go out for a little bit longer. If the puppy's not fine, just ignore them. You don't wanna, you don't wanna cause any drama, but just let them just sit back down again and, and read the book. So you're still present. You're just, they're just a little bit restricted. They're not able to stick to you like glue. 
And we add duration that way as well. So eventually what you want to do is you want to be able to leave the room for half an hour and go and make dinner or make a cup of tea or have a shower and your dog is totally comfortable in that area. And then what you're going to do is you're going to practice actually leaving the house because I know some of you have started work again already. I know some of you are about to. So we want to get your puppy used to the idea of you putting on work clothes, grabbing your shoes, grabbing your keys and leaving the house. So you're going to do this, you're going to practice doing all of these things without actually leaving. So get yourself ready for work, whatever that looks like for you. And then leave the house for 30 seconds, come back in, make a cup of tea. Now, sorry, I should back up. Before you do that, you want to make sure the puppy has been to the toilet and that they have had some form of exercise before they go into their safe zone with their Kong. So you, you want to make, you want to rule out anything um, that's going to cause them to be uncomfortable, like needing to go to the toilet or just needing some exercise. And then you're going to do your practice run, right? So you leave the house, you come back, you have a cup of tea, you might read your book, you might put the TV on, and then you might do the same thing again, leave the house. And you want to get to the point where you can leave the house for longer periods of time without your puppy panicking. But you've got to start small, just baby, baby steps and work to your puppy's comfort level. Um, and then when you when you return home, let's say you've actually managed to leave the house for half an hour and there's no panicking. When you return home or after any sort of absence, you you want to ignore your puppy because you don't want to you don't want to come back at them when they're at their when they're in their crate or their playpen with a lot of energy because that's going to get them really really racked up. And we're trying to keep them on the straight and narrow. We're trying to keep them nice and calm. So. Let's say you've left the house for half an hour, come back, ignore your dog, but let them out of their playpen and take them outside, continuing to ignore them. So no talking, no eye contact, take them to their toileting area and follow the toileting process. So you'll ignore them, you will wait until they are about to pee, you give them their cue, which is go potty or go toilet or whatever it is. And then once they finish that, then you reward them with play and praise and lots of love and attention. And that way you teach them that being okay is alone. You also get your toileting practice in and they're still nice and calm until the very end when you're rewarding them with all your love. So I hope that helps. I know I'm going through that really quickly. I do have another video which I will share the link to um, where I talk about it a little bit slow, uh, more slowly so that you can kind of really get a feel for what it might look like for your puppy. But please just take puppy, take, take baby steps, puppy steps. All right. And then the last round of questions I got was from Natalie, Whitney, Kim and Shireen. And they all have puppies who are nipping. So again, I do have another video where I go into nipping in more depth, and so I'll share that here as well. But basically nipping, I mean, it sounds like some of your puppies are actually breaking your skin and tearing your clothes, and it, oh, they're so sharp, those little teeth, it's so painful. So first of all, nipping is a really important part of their um, development, and we need to teach them to inhibit their bite because it means that if they're taught this, if, if we go through the process and they, then they learn to be gentle with their mouths, when they're an adult dog, if they bite, even if it's out of fear, their bite won't be a full strength bite. So I know it doesn't feel like something to celebrate right now, but do celebrate the fact that your puppy is going through this really normal and really important developmental stage. So that's that. I know it doesn't feel good. So let's get on with how to how to fix it. So the first thing we're going to do is a lot of you are already doing this from the comments. As soon as your puppy nips too hard, you you say ouch and you make it really quite dramatic and you can follow that with a timeout. And the timeout for this process would be you'd say ouch and then you'd say timeout and then you would put them into their timeout area. And so they just get an immediate response to, oh, you know, I just did this, 
and now I'm here maybe I won't do that next time again it's a process and it will take them a, a number of times to understand that what they did that landed them in jail is the thing that they're not supposed to do so don't expect it to happen overnight no puppy training happens overnight all of this all of puppy training is a process and sometimes it feels like you take one step back and uh, one step forward and five steps back but you're all moving in the right direction and the cool thing about positive reinforcement training is that you're never going to break your puppy there's there's no punishment there's nothing scary it's all good stuff it's just a matter of teaching them what's appropriate so that's the first part we want to stop them we want to stop them from nipping but more importantly a lot of them are nipping because they just get really wound up they just you know you can see it in their eyes they've left the building they just don't even know what they're doing anymore and it's just you know kind of like a piranha so <laughs> So what we want to do is we want to work with them when they're in a calm state. Now, obviously, puppies are going to get really, really excited. So what we want to teach them is we want to teach them that being excited is OK. And then we bring it down and we're really calm and then we get excited again and then we bring it down and we're really calm. So throughout throughout play, don't let them get so worked up that they just can't handle it anymore whenever you're playing you want to bring in lots of you want to bring in lots of interruptions with nice calming breaks so the initial step for getting a calm puppy is just to ignore them so let's say you're playing fetch you throw the ball they bring it back and then you just turn around and you just kind of don't say anything and you don't look at them and you're just calming down they will get a little bit confused about this but they'll be like oh okay I don't know what's happening and they'll probably start scratching because that's what they do when they get confused and then they'll start to settle down and then once they're in a calm state you can do some practice uh, practice some training commands maybe a watch maybe a sit and then you can start the game again but you're always bringing it back to that really really calm state and that prevents them from leaving leaving the building from not knowing what to do because they're just babies they're just they're just trying to figure it out um so that's step one step two i want them to start touching your hands with a really gentle mouth so this is where we're going to start hand feeding them because now they're motivated they're really motivated to use a gentle mouth because they want the food so hand feeding a piece of food or a clump of food whatever it is that you're feeding at a time if their teeth touch your hand they don't get fed for a minute you might do an ouch you might turn away and ignore them you don't need to time them out at this point but they'll they'll learn that that feeling when I've got my teeth on mum's hand that feeling always means I end up waiting for my food and that's annoying so now I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna touch mum's hand with her with my teeth so that's the second step now the third phase by about six months old we don't want them to be mouthing hands at all especially if they're a big dog especially if they're the sort of dog that can sometimes get a bad rap i'm thinking dogs with big jaws like staffies and rottweilers we don't want them touching people's hands and it's not because they're going to do it out of meanness or, or aggression it's just that they have a little bit of a uh, reputation attached to them unfortunately so we want to stop that from happening altogether by about six months and we're going to do that by teaching them the leave it command and i will link um, there's going to be a lot of links in this in this post but i will link to the instructions for the leave it command as well because we really want them to not be mouthing you at this point but so so those are my instructions I know I went through them really fast but just know that all of your puppies are doing exactly what puppies do and puppy training is a process and you go slow and steady you make gentle progress you make slow progress sometimes but you're you've, you're getting all the information you need you just need to remember that your dog is unique and you are unique and your house is unique so what's working for one person may not work for you 
um, or it may not work as quickly for you. And I know that feels really frustrating and I never, I always feel really bad because I don't have this magic wand where I can say, you know, <laughs> there you go, your puppy's trained. It's, it's all a process and sometimes some of them take longer than, than others. So if your puppy is nipping, but they're doing something else really well, just remember to really celebrate that. Um, they're all moving in the right direction. All right, let's have a look. I've got some comments here. Margie, thanks, Mikhail, for the cup of tea advice. Lenny is my Bedlington Terrier's name. Oh, that's so cute, little Lenny. Margie, work on those commands. I mean, Bedlington's just like any other dog, super, super smart dogs. So he will get it. He will get it. Um, just remember to work with your puppy when you're not feeling really stressed out or you just really need a break. Those are never times to practice hardcore training. <laughs> just schedule in some training sessions. Jackie, you're so welcome. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, Wendy, oh, thank you. Fabulous as usual. I had to read that one out, didn't I? Thanks, Wendy, that's really lovely. And Lisa, oh, thanks, Mikhail. Look forward to receiving the links. Yes, I will do that as soon as I get off, if Facebook allows. Sometimes sometimes something weird happens on the Facebook end and I can't get in right away, but I will post those links as soon as I can. So thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm loving all the comments and how we help each other out within the Facebook group. Please continue and remember to post lots of cute photos of your beautiful puppies. All right, you guys, I'll see you all again next week. Take care.